being on the panel, uh, the panel was really interesting. And one of the interesting parts is I'm not actually allowed to talk about a lot of specifics, partially because proposals are not public, and especially the rejected ones. Um, but also, I'm not even allowed to say which panel I was on or anything like that. Uh, so people can't find out whether I reviewed them. I doubt anyone in this room really knows anyone on, who submitted that I, to that panel that I was on, but it's still a good idea not to talk about it. But I can talk about general things that I observed and things. And one of them is it actually really helped the panel to be explicit about those two criteria. What are the kind of the intellectual contributions that you're going to make with this project, and what are the broader impacts that you're going to have with this project? Because part of the work of a panel is writing this panel summary, where we have to say these are the intellectual merit of the project, these are the broader impacts of the project, and being able to find those easily and make sure that we got all the ones that the project that the author of the project thinks that are, are there is really valuable, and that helped further discussions. Say, well, don't forget about this, and being able to say that explicitly and see that and put those on the summary page is actually really important mm -hmm. because in the room there's there's a discussion of a bunch of people and only a small number of them have actually read the proposal and most of the rest they'll if they're going if they're trying to participate they'll pay attention they'll read the, they'll skim through the summary um, and that's it so putting that in the summary is very important uh, and very helpful um, in the so the panels as Manuel said I know they vary widely. Um, and I've heard stories from other people on panels that are different than the panel that I was on. But there were two really big problems that kind of caused pro proposals to be fall in the not recommended for funding category in my panel. And these pr problems are very general, so I, can, I feel like I can talk about them and everyone will understand. The first problem I'll uh, describe uh, with the word meh. It's just kind of, it's not that interesting. <laughs> Um, so Can you spell that? Spell it. <laughs> M E H. M E H. Yes, that's what I have in my notes. M E H. Um, and that was actually a, a big problem for them with the proposals. The work was really solid. We thought that we believed that they could do it. It just no one was excited about it. No one was willing to argue for it. It's the so what factor. Yes, it's the so what factor. That's exactly it. Um, and it turns out that was a big problem in a number of these proposals, is that uh, they were too straightforward. And recently, the NSF has been trying to actually make this more explicit by talking about transformative potential, um, which is basically uh, NSF speak for how is this going to make a, how is this really exciting and going to make a big difference in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that was actually a, a really big problem for a number of proposals, is that just weren't exciting enough. Um, and they actually seem to prefer the higher risk proposals because they were more exciting. So, you found that too? Yeah, exactly right. Which is really interesting. Right. But then the other problem they had was, people, there was a lot of question of, I don't believe they can do this. Mm. There was a lot of discussion of, I don't think that they can do this. Which is really, they haven't laid out the plan well enough yet. Mm -hmm. It's usually not a, I don't believe this person can pull off this project. It's more. I don't see how they're going to do it with this plan. Mm. And it was, a, it was more of a flaw in the plan than the, than the person. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the other really big thing that came up a lot in proposals is uh, they, they, we'd end up be talking about it and we're like, I'm not sure that, they, they can, that this is actually going to work. Um, mm -hmm. we'd, we'd talk about some of the study proposals and say, well, no one's going to do this or no one's going to do that or uh, they want to build a website but no one's going to use it or something like that. Um, did, did they ever say things like, well, they're not asking for enough money. You know, they can't pull this off with the amount of money that they're asking for. I was, so I was in a, a small panel, which is in the, the capped at half a million dollars. It was the definition of small for the NSF, apparently. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting definition of small, <coughs> but that's what it is. Um, and actually, one of the most interesting things, money was very rarely discussed. Hmm. So, and the only time it was discussed was something like that. They're not asking for enough. It's, you, that was usually the biggest problem. If, the only time the money was ever discussed, which was only one or two in my panel, it was they're not asking, this yeah. the amount of money they're asking for, which is usually well below the cap, isn't enough to actually do the project. And so they did talk about, or they really talked about, oh, they're asking for way too much money for the amount of work they're doing. No. Um, I'm trying to remember. I faintly remember seeing something about that. 
it wasn't money, it was personnel. They had too much work planned for like one person. Like, I can't believe one person's gonna do all of this. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, with, so, but surprisingly, I was really surprised money was very rarely discussed in the panel. Did you have any experience in your panels? Um, what I wanted to say is that uh, it depends on the officer, too. Yes. And my officer was very explicit about the budget. Okay. How much money was used in order to make the program, the proposal feasible. Mm -hmm. So it's the connection between the money and the feasibility, yeah. the implementation. So, uh, but I think that you agree with this. The officer really matters. Yes. And he's the one that is guiding you when you're doing the review. And it gives you the guidelines and so forth. And sometimes the panel goes in one direction and it's not necessarily the direction that the officer wants. Mm -hmm. And come back, he comes back and said, you know what guys, I'm asking you to do this and this. At Justice, they used to give us a template where they'd say 20% uh, of the overall score is going to be on this element, this mm -hmm. criterion, and then they would guide the discuss discussion using those criteria in a template. Did they give you that kind of template? They didn't say t like 20% of the score. They said you need to con consider both of the, the two main criteria, intellectual merit and broader impact. You need to address both of those in your review, and then they gave us a template for the panel summary to fill out, where we had to, which was basically just a uh, structure for the discussion that included strengths and weaknesses in both those areas and per transformative potential and overall opinion um, and that was that was helpful that helped structure it but there was no instructions on how to weight things and they and the program officer when I was there did that intentionally the, the, um, and apparently it's official NSF policy that the weighting is up to the reviewers and not up to the program officer correct mm -hmm. Well, Rick, the reason I raise it, I have a tendency to be, just to ask my kids, really cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's no, or, or there's very little value in saying, I can do this work and I can do it really efficiently and I can bring it down. No. Yeah. That's no. not that mm -hmm. big a no. deal. No. Right? They're not no. impressed by that. No, They're, no not for no. Um, no, actually, I think it, it's better to err on the upper yeah. side, say, right. this is the other way this is really what I need to do this. And you want to be able to convince them that, the, there's more, the idea is really worth funding, and once they decide it's worth funding, then they'll give you what you need to do it. And you need to convince them, this is what I need to do a good job on it. They'd rather you have a, do a really good job and have to spend a little more money on that than uh, be cheap and potentially not and have it be slightly higher risk. And, and personnel. <coughs> yes. Yes, they're happy to fund personnel. Please. They're actually. Well, I, I really think I've made that mistake in the past. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a strong tendency to like. You, it feels like I'm it's from everything. Uh, we're also used to like. How do we do this cheaper? How do we do this cheaper? It's really weird to be putting together a document that says that where that's not really the criterion you're working on. You know, it's really strange to. I remember from my putting together mine, trying to do that, and uh, like, I could cut here and I could no. That's not what I want to do. I need to convince them that this is what I need, and just ask for what I need, and they're usually happy to get it. I have had uh, instances in the past, occasionally they will fund it, but they'll cut back the budget, and then they'll let you decide how that gets cut back. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they do that so they can fund more proposals. On, on rare occasions it goes the other way. I have a friend who... Oh, really? Yeah, I, I have a friend who, who <clears throat> asked for a certain amount of money, and when he received his award, they upped it by about 10%, which blew wow. his mind. <laughs> <laughs> So it does it happen. I don't know how often it happens, but yeah. this is NSF. No, this was not NSF. NSF. This was the Guggenheim Foundation. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So those those were the two big kind of lessons that I learned from serving on the panel. Is that the, the biggest problems were that it wasn't exciting enough, and that the the plan wasn't convincing that it was going to produce the results you described. So, um, and the plan doesn't have to, it's one of the hard parts, proposals are very limited in, in space. Um, and it's hard to know what to focus on the plan and what not to. And uh, it helps to kind of understand the kinds of people that are gonna be on the, on the panel so that you can, there are some things that they'll take for granted that you can do and some things that you need to explain in more detail. And it helps to kind of have some experience talking to those kind of people to figure out what parts of it you need to explain in more detail, what parts of it not, and uh, look. You can, and if you have, if you if it gets rejected, look and try to see what parts of it they were skeptical of, skeptical of, and try to explain those in more detail in the future. Um, that that is one way that'd be very helpful. 
even though that's usually they'll say I don't think this is going to work or I don't like the X that usually just means you're not explaining it well enough mm -hmm. not that it's necessarily a bad idea so it's okay to resubmit yes so, um, like I said before the NSF is obligated to, to review every proposal they receive whether it's resubmitted or not um, there are in other agencies I know there are some more uh, restrictions on that but the NSF as the basic science funding agency of the, gov of the federal government they try to review everything and they encourage resubmissions um, I think if you can make if, if it takes a couple tries to make it a really good project then that's great because then they end up with a really good project and that's what they care about which is paying attention in what the program is trying to do yes. is essential yes. because we rejected a lot of proposals that didn't have anything to do with what the guidelines in the particular panel that we was, excuse me, the particular program that it was submitted, and there was no connection. Yeah, you're and right. There's like a, in my panel, there were probably four or five that we didn't even really discuss. There was like right, exactly. It came up, and the, 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 that proposal came up, and all everyone who read it said this isn't really related. Here's why, and it was put in the, put in the no pile very quickly. Right, exactly. So read carefully, let's read carefully what is what the program is asking for and yes. then plug it. And you, you said it, I plug it in completely directly into what they were asking and then I even changed the, the conceptualization of, the, yes. of, the, of my proposal. And I think that that's important because those are the, the proposals that don't fit the criteria of the program is, are the first ones that go out. Yes. Um, and there's a, there's a number of reasons for that. It's also, this is what they want to do, but also the proposal, the pro programs are written by senior people in, the, in that area also, and those are the same kinds of people that are going to be reviewing the proposals. Right. So they're basically writing down, this is what we find exciting. <coughs> so if you don't, if you're not doing something like this, we're not going to find it all that exciting. Right. So those are the, that's the kind of they're kind of telling you what kinds of things that they're going to jump on and say this is awesome, <laughs> and be willing to stand up and champion. Right. And and it turns out actually that's really that's really important is having a champion. So if, if everyone's like, yeah, I wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to fund it, it usually goes in no pile. <clears throat> if someone stands up and says, this is awesome, I want to see this happen, even if the others don't like it, it usually doesn't end up in the no pile. Correct. Yeah. So having, a, having someone who's really excited about it and willing to stand up for you is more important than convincing everyone, it seemed like, in my panel. Did you find that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Similar, similar experience. Yeah. Well, did you find that the reviewers of the same proposal could be at extremes? Mm -hmm. People really hated it. People oh, yeah. really loved oh, it. Yeah. It's the same oh, yeah. proposal. Oh yeah. Yeah, I found that, and actually, I I, I was at my panel. Uh, I w I was surprised by the amount of disagreement and how some people were putting in the top category. As people were like, "This is clearly a no," and at the end of the pr panel, both the program officer and someone in the room who was a panelist who was a former program officer both said, "I'm amazed at how much agreement there was in this panel." Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> I had the opposite reaction, so I guess that means there's usually a lot of disagreement. If there was people on both ends, people who yeah. really liked it and people who really didn't, that usually meant, so for, for, in my, for every time that happened in my panel, it was, here's a really exciting idea that we're not sure they can do. Okay. <laughs> um, and usually what that ended up is that it ended up in the middle category, which is actually pretty good because most of those get funded. Um, and with a bunch of advice like the panel summary was extra long with here's how you can modify it and actually in one of the cases all the highest rated proposal we had was exactly one of those there was a bunch of people who were like we i can't believe this is that everyone this will ever work this this experiment yeah. I, if I, I can't tell you what it is but if i did you would be like there's no way that this will work but it was a really exciting idea and end up in the highest category actually so in the end, we really liked the idea. We wanted it to make it work. We provided a ton of advice. Like I think it was like two page, two pages of issues you might have and suggestions that the panel has to help make it work. And so was it high funded category. in the end? Um, or do you they haven't know? they haven't announced the funding yet. It was the only one in the top category from my panel. So I'm guessing it will be, but it's not always clear. Mm. So part of what <laughs> you're you're saying is there's a give and take argument, and positions change mm -hmm. during during Absolutely. the discussion, and that's certainly what I found on panels I've been on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of give and take and changing of opinions. And and, and going into the question of uh, Fred, it, there is a possibility that the the proposal is so is, is so polarizing that 
two panelists are in favor of it and supportive of it, but three of them are like, ah, one is in the middle, and the other two are like, this is a piece of crap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the question was very important, Fred, because usually the people in the center are the ones that might tell the balance mm -hmm. and say, persuade the other two. Mm -hmm. They say, guys, this has merit. We don't like him, but the proposal has merit. And it's exciting. And then it, it goes and, and tilts the, the balance, usually to the positive. Mm -hmm. So if you rework your submission based on the two pages that you got back, mm -hmm. and then you resubmit, is it going back to a whole new panel? That's one of the real challenges, be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. Yes, yeah. and completely different people. Yes. Um, so that's one of the hard parts about the way the NSF does it is they, there's, there's no continuity across panelists. Um, the NIH actually has a very a different panelist model where there is continuity. And you say, this is a resubmission of this previous one, and they try to get it to the same people and review it, um, from what I understand. They also have standing panels that are review all of them for like a given year. Um, so the, NSF, the NIH, I don't really understand the NIH near as well, but I know they have a different panelist model that allows for more continuity. Um, but the NSF does not have any continuity at all. Almost certainly it's going to go to completely different people. 